this this tournament right here is probably going to break some records if you're weighing in two pounders at st lawrence river you're in trouble because for every two pounder you reel in someone's reeling in a four pounder here is an eight pound gold label this is a nine pound gold label i mean a crap am i talking about rewind that i'll go up there and not have any three eighths ounce tungsten weights and i'll be over there bumming some off mark but like mark let me get a weight or two can you hear it can you hear it we go on the St. Lawrence River. Speed. Are we speeding? Are we good? Yeah, we're speeding. Have you ever seen that movie Heavyweights? A long time ago. You know when they're rolling? Yeah. Well, are you rolling now, Kenneth? Speed. Does that mean rolling? Yes, it does. What is speed? He's like, we're recording. Oh, speed. Okay, here we go, guys. Heavyweight's a good movie. Check that movie out, big dog. That's a good movie. Speed. How about Ben Stiller? Yes. I see the future chairman of a Fortune 500 company. I see a famous rap artist. It's hilarious. That's a funny, funny movie. I'm dogging it, Pat. I'm dogging it. I'm dogging it, Pat. I'm dogging it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you ever seen Heavyweight's, if you hadn't, check it out. I'm out here promoting heavyweights. St. Lawrence River preview. If you can't tell, I got a train wreck in my hand. Right here, we're gonna be throwing three at a time, spinning poles. Y'all ready? All right, guys, here we are. St. Lawrence River preview. I'm super pumped up to go to St. Lawrence. I will tell y'all this. St. Lawrence River is there is no like maybe there is no like probably it is officially not officially oh fish ali officially my favorite fishery in the whole world i love that place it's awesome first time i fished st lawrence river was in 2017 um i fished there in the elite series we had an event there um it was in i think it was in late july so what we're doing is we're leaving coming up here soon heading this coming weekend to the st lawrence this is early july okay this is like late june early july we went for the first time it was in late july maybe early august fish were out they were coming kind of offshore i was catching some in like 20 25 foot some places in like 12 15. dude i had never seen this place before i literally pulled up i was like god dang this water's super clear and I was thinking like, dude, I don't, I want to find me some dingy water. Like we need to go somewhere else. I think I launched it like, I don't know, Ogdensburg and I ran up. The farther I went up, the clearer it got. I was like, oh my gosh, I need like four pound line. Dude, I think I went out there with like a jig for the first time. I had no clue about St. Lawrence River, literally no clue. I was casting a jig with 20 pound line and like eddies and I was catching like three and a half pound smallmouth which a three and a half pound smallmouth is awesome, but not there. Cause you better have four pluses if you're gonna do good. Uh, 17 pounds there and a five fish limit will literally get you like 50th place. Like I'm not playing, you catch 17 a day, you're gonna be in like 42nd place. Like seriously. And I finally got on a spinning rod deal, which I love throwing spinning rods. Um, but speaking of St. Lawrence River, we're getting ready to leave on Sunday, heading up there. This is early July, okay? This is the preview for stage five. Early July, I got a feeling a lot of these fish, um, there's gonna be some spawning going on. I think you may have a few little post spawners here and there, but for the most part, I, I got a feeling this is gonna be a spawning tournament. If not spawning, a sight fishing kind of deal. It's gonna be more of a shallow deal than it is deep. Um, the water temps, I don't know what the water temp is. Typically, it's a little cooler there. I've been checking the weather, and the weather is, I guess you'd say, warming up. It's in the 80s right now. It's been like hit and miss. I mean, it honestly has. I've been checking it. It's been like 73, 81, high of 68, low of like 51. So it's like them fish, I got a feeling they're going to be full-blown spawn when we get there. I don't know. But... Spinning rods, 
are going to be a big factor there. Okay, now here's the deal. I, you don't have to throw spinning rods for smallmouth. Everyone does. The main key for spinning rods is you're throwing a lot smaller baits, okay? You're using a lot lighter line. Now, I ain't saying you can't tie on 10, 12, and 15 pound line on a bait caster and bomb a tube out there, because I'm probably gonna do that too. But, spinning rod, I can tie a drop shot on, use 10 pound line. Um, I can throw a hair jig on it. I can throw like a little marabou hair jig. I know that's a big popular deal up there. I can throw a, uh, a Ned rig, you know. Throw a Ned rig. I got a rattling Ned right here. Guggen Bates rattling Ned. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? We going to St. Lawrence River. Uh, I caught some fish on this bait actually uh, the last time I went up there. And this color, I think it's called Green Pumpkin Goby. That's the color. So that right there is a rattling Ned. It's got a rattle on the back of it. You can just kind of snap him around and get some bites and get him to bite it. But that right there is probably my favorite color. There are goby in the St. Lawrence River. If you've never seen a goby, he's kind of a weird looking guy. Really green pumpkin colored. So anything green pumpkin. I'm gonna have a Ned tied on for sure. That's a very popular bait. You throw this around, you know, fish that are on bed spawning. Um, I really think you can throw a daggum hot dog weenie on them when they're on bed. I'm not playing. These smallmouth are like way too easy to catch on bed. Literally, if you see one on bed and throw it 30 feet past it and like close your eyes, your eyes like, no way. And you got it. I don't know why they're super easy to catch on bed. This, this tournament right here is probably going to break some records. It's going to get crazy good. Um, I know I've said that before, and these previews, I've missed a lot of them, I really have, because I come into it with like a preconceived notion. So we had a preview at Harris Chain. I was like, yeah, I can't wait to go catch them offshore. Man, we're gonna get off the bank. They're gonna be off the bank, it's hot in Florida. No, I think I caught like one bass offshore, unbelievable. We did just get offshore at Chickamauga though, and I'm going on a tangent again. This tournament, super excited about it. These are just a few baits that I'm gonna have tied on at St. Lawrence River. We covered the uh, the Ned Rig. Had that on a uh, quarter ounce head. Three eighths if you wanna fish a little bit deeper. 10 pound, 10 or 12 pound gold label cigar. And if you haven't seen the gold label guys, I got some right here. This is the gold label. 10 pound gold label. And I'm gonna tell you why I like the gold label. Okay, this is a 10 pound fluorocarbon, but the diameter of these are a lot smaller. Okay, I say a lot, They're, they are significantly smaller on these gold labels, okay? So these are my two main lines that I'm using for my leader lines on my spinning rods. 10 pound gold label, eight pound gold label. You can go down to six. I don't like going to six because it's, keep in mind, when you're reeling in a five pound lark, a, a six pound smallmouth, you got six pound line, you flirting, you flirting with it. Drop shot, everybody knows drop shot's a big deal about smallmouth, I ain't even gotta go into it, y'all know how to rig it. I use 10 pound or eight pound on my drop shot, drag and drop. Any kind of brown drop shot bait works really good. I like this bait right here because it's, uh, it's kind of small. I guess you say it imitates a goby. It's got like a brown belly on it, kind of a bluish top. Caught a lot on that last time. What I use on that is I use a uh, owner cover shot hook sometimes when I'm around grass. We're throwing a lot of grass around St. Lawrence River, but I'll just nose hook him. I'll nose hook him, or I'll run him right through there with that cover shot, have the hook poking right out through here. So I'll do that. The main reason I want to make this video, guys, is just kind of have a preview and kind of go into the mindset before a tournament of what these guys are sitting there thinking. I know these fish are kind of going to be on bed. So literally in the next two or three days, I'm going to rig up probably six or seven spinning rods that I can fish for fish super shallow. I'm going to have a, a eighth ounce drop shot weight. I'm going to have a couple very light Ned rigs. I may have a weightless lunker log, like a little small one on there, just a pitch over there for spawning fish. So that way when I'm out there, 
I can try what I think is going to go down first, and then we can adjust from there. I don't really want to go there and be like, oh, let me be completely different from everybody else. Let me get out there in 35 foot. That sometimes works, but you need to just go with what's, what you think is going to be the deal because 90% of the time it's going to work. And spawning fish there are going to be the deal, 100% fact. Watch, I'll go and I'll catch them in 47 foot. I'll go up there and I'll have any 3 8 ounce tungsten weights and I'll be over there bumming some off Mark, but like, Mark, let me get a weight or two. Literally. Unbelievable. I think this tournament's gonna knock it out of the park. I really do. There's gonna be some records broken at this deal. I mean, you gotta think. If you run around and you mark 20 fish that are on bed or cruising or on a rock, my goodness. You may go catch those 20 fish and have, literally have 80 pounds. I'm not playing. Like this, this ain't no joke. I'm just blown up behind us. Unbelievable. Guys, if you haven't been paying attention to these tournaments and Major League Fishing, check it out, guys. We're, we're starting, um, I think I fish on Saturday. I'm in Group B in this tournament. So I'm going to fish on a Saturday, which up there it really don't matter because there ain't a lot of local pressure because there ain't a ton of people up there fishing. I've really hardly ever seen many locals out there. That's why the fishing is so good. It's one of the least fished places on the whole United States because, number one, it's been froze over. These fish do not get a lot of pressure because it's so stinking cold up there. And right now it's prime time. Uh, the weight minimum is two pounds. Two pounds on St. Lawrence River is not hard to do. Literally, you can catch a little 14 incher and he weighs two pounds. But this tournament will not be a two pound festival, I promise you. If y'all just watch, self-fulfilling prophecy coming along. Here we go, you ready? If you're weighing in two pounders at St. Lawrence River, you're in trouble. Because for every two pounder you reel in, someone's reeling in a four pounder. That's how good it is, like really. That means that I gotta catch 42 pounders to compete with somebody catching 24s. Do the math, they gonna catch bigs. So y'all get ready, we're about to blow it out at St. Lawrence River, I'll be honest. This right here is by, like we're gonna rock the whole world, like it's gonna get serious. We cannot fish in Canada. So the questions below, we're solving all of them. We cannot fish in Canada, the Canna, Canada border, it splits straight through the river. Canada is on some kind of draconian lockdown, whatever you want to call it, I have no clue. Get your vaccine and let's rock along. Come on, come on, what are we doing? Let me go fish in Canada. Not trying to get political here, but I'm just trying to catch bass. And you should too. All right guys, appreciate it. We're headed to St. Lawrence River, super pumped up. About to get the spinning rods out, rig them up, tie some FGs, maybe tie like three or four in a row, break them because I'm not really good at tying FGs. So then I switch to an Alberto knot, but then I, after that, the Alberto don't work. So then I retie an FG and I feel good about it. And I'm gonna go catch some. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you.